What's up, everybody? Welcome to Yellow Pages Bookcast. We are your hosts. This is Steven. And this is Jason. And this is the podcast where we go over Asian American fiction and maybe nonfiction in the future. Each episode, we'll be reviewing a book by an Asian American author. And this week, we have The Thousand Crimes of Ming Tzu. Yes. And last time we did Jade City, that was picked by Jason. This time, I wanted to choose this as kind of like a breather. It's a little shorter. It's about 275 or so pages, but it breezes by pretty quick. And the main reason why I wanted to do this is it's kind of it kind of has the themes that I really enjoy. Number one, it's a Western. Number two, it's Asian American. Number three, it's in a time period that I was always interested in. um, And that time period is during the early 1900s when the Chinese were coming over and doing a lot of railroad work and trying to find gold and such. But yeah, that that's pretty much the reason why I chose this one. Now, just to give a little intro of the book, Jason, do you want to do you want to do that? Just kind of intro the book uh, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. So it. let's just start with like a brief synopsis. So we follow Ming Tzu, the titular character. He is a Chinese assassin basically who was orphaned from a young age and raised by basically a white mob boss um so he was basically his the mob boss's personal hitman yeah so yeah he's he's killed a lot of people and that that's what's referenced as the thousand crimes of ming tzu um we follow him on his journey for revenge um this is this is like your a basic revenge tale he he married a white well he eloped with a white woman which was uh frowned upon and i think it was against the law back in the day yeah um so they had to keep it on the down low and then basically um a group of men took her away from him and sent him away to work on the railroads so now we follow him where he's completed his uh forced labor i think and then yeah now he's off to find his wife and kill the men who betrayed him Yes, and therein lies all the extra meat. Um, so why don't you give me kind of like a personal rating of how you felt about this book? Yeah, so I, I kind of went back and forth on this because, you know, I really liked a lot of things about this book. It's really refreshing to see a book set in this time period, especially mm-hmm. focusing on a character who, you know, historically we haven't really seen much representation of, but they were actually, you know, like they were the backbones of the railroads and the old West. Right. Right. Um, so that was really refreshing. Um, I'm also a sucker for Westerns. <laughs> really? Um, yeah. Yeah. Have you read a lot of Western fiction? Cause I've never, I've no, never no. Them. I mean like movies mostly like movies and TV. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So this is also kind of new to me. I don't. I don't really read uh, westerns, but you know, this mm-hmm. is. I believe this is like my first real one. So yeah, I. I. I that was pretty um, refreshing. There's also magic in this book, which was surprising yeah. to me. Right. Yeah. That was, um, was and I'm fun. always. Yeah, I'm always a sucker for the supernatural, as as you'll probably find out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I like that part too. And then there were a lot of interesting concepts introduced. Okay. Which is also part of like my cons of this book, like mm-hmm. which we'll get into a little bit later. But I, I think at the end, I, I'm going to settle on a 3.5 out of 5. Okay. Um, this is this is the author's debut novel, I believe. So right. I, I think it kind of shows, but it's I'm, I'm really looking forward to like what Tom Lin has coming out next based on yeah. this book. What about you, Stephen? All right. Well, like I said, I, I am a Western fan and we, I agree with everything that you said pretty much. I, what I really like about this book are the chapters are really short. So I really felt like I was achieving something so quickly. Yep, and yep. I do think it moves very quickly in terms of pacing until the last quarter, uh, maybe the last, fifth of the book 
and during that part things start to slow down a little bit and it does it does get to a point where you know it's a western so you know they're going through a lot of desert areas where at one point he's by himself a lot and that part kind of slowed down for me but mm-hmm. other than that, I really enjoyed the pacing. I liked all the character work. And I I am interested in what you have to say about the some of the ideas that he brought but didn't fully flesh out the things that you're you were talking about earlier. But overall I thought it was like a four. I think I gave Jade City a four and a half. I don't remember. I but, think it was a four. Oh, I gave it a four. Okay, yeah, so yeah, because I gave I gave it a four out of five, and I think you gave it the same. Okay, so if I gave it a four out of five, the main reason I gave it a four out of five is probably because of the ver- verbosity. There's so much word. There are so many words, and mm-hmm. in this book, I I'm kind of giving it a four still because there is a part of this book where it slows down. But other than that, like leading up to that particular part I'm talking about, everything feels so seamless and you do get a lot of character beats of every single supporting cast, which we'll get into in a little bit. But yeah, I, I'm i going with the four there. <laughs> cool. Do you want to start getting into the characters um, before yeah. we uh, go into spoiler territory? Oh, 100%. So there are a lot of... There are actually a lot of really cool characters other than Ming Tu. So Jason kind of mentioned that Ming Tu is kind of like the personal hitman of, you know, the person who raised him. And that's another that's another genre I really like. But I think if we get into his supporting cast, Jason, I think you can jump into it a little bit. But there is a prophet and then... After that, he meets a traveling circus, pretty much. And that traveling circus has a, the ringmaster, which we'll get into, a young lady named Hazel, and she's really cool. We'll get into that. Hunter, a young boy, Nota, Proteus, and Miguel, pretty much. Now, I mean Gomez. Oh, is it Gomez? Oh, I, I just have him down as Gomez. Oh, shoot. I'll double check. Maybe it's Miguel Gomez. <laughs> that, might, that, might be, that might be his first name. I don't know. But I have him down as Gomez, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll go back and double check it later. But so I really think we should get into the spoilers because each of these characters like kind of get spoilery. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Well, so before that, let's just close it out with... Um, yeah. You know, check out The Thousand Crimes of Ming-Tzu by Tom Lin. Um, just released this year, right? Um, was it yeah. April of 2021? Yeah. So go check it out. If you're a fan of Westerns, you'll love it. If you're a fan of Revenge Tales, you'll like it. If um, you're you a fan of... New, yeah. Something new. Like, just something new. Like, you know, it's got... It's like a Western, but it's got its own twist. Like, go check it out. You'll be, at the very least, um, interested. Yeah, pleasantly surprised. And if you're a fan of short chapters, go check it out. Which Yeah, I think there was a, a, a chapter that was just two pages long. I was pretty surprised. <laughs> I loved it. Okay, anyways, <laughs> so let's get into right, the so, spoilers. All right, so spoiler alert. If you haven't read it, go out and read it or just stop listening if you don't want to get us spoiled. And then join us after you've read it. Okay, yeah, let's start. Let's start. Okay, so... Let's go through the characters really quick. Um, why don't Why don't you kind of tell me like who is your favorite character, and then um, maybe dive into that a little bit. Yeah. So surprisingly, the ringmaster. I was kind of annoyed by him at first, but once you learn his, so basically the 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 circus troupe, they they're they have this thing they call miracles. Basically, they're like real miracles, like feats of magic right and they're not like magic tricks where there's like a physical explanation for it they're like they seem to be actual legit miracles and magic so the ringmaster you know he's basically in a time loop he's yeah. lived yeah he's lived uh that section of his life many many times 
Right. So, and I thought that was, oh, that's really interesting. That kind of like opened up the book for me. I'm like, wow. So what if he's not the only one at a time loop? And then we'll get into that with plot points once, once we're done with characters. But that was one of the things that kind of raised some eyebrows from me. Mm -hmm. um, I also liked Nota because his, his miracle is he messes with people's memories. Right. So the first time we see it in action is I think um, a cop is looking for um, some drunk man that uh, Ming gets rid of. Right. And so Nota basically has Jedi mind tricks on the cop <laughs> to make him go away. And that's right. like basically his power um, at a very low level. He can actually make people forget certain things. Right. Which, you know, it really ties into one of the main themes of this book, which is memory. Um, so I thought he was like a major player in that whole concept. And I thought that was kind of cool. I like that you bring up the whole memory thing because... When, when we talk about Ming Tzu's journey throughout the book, there's chapters of him remembering him and his wife. And as it gets closer and closer to him actually reaching her, I don't know. Does it, it sort of seems to dim. Like it, it he stops like yeah. remembering her as much. Yeah. Like I, if I mean? recall, if I recall correctly, the later half of the book, he starts dreaming of, I don't know, like primordial things like ancient seas and um, stuff like stuff that happens during the day. Like one of my favorite moments was when they s find that whale bone, like skeleton. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that night he dreams of like, you know, creatures swimming in like the ancient seas that used to be where the desert is now. Oh, Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. I, 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 I almost did. I did not remember that. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of, I, I'm sure I miss a lot of stuff. But there's a lot of uh, little bits here and there that you have to pay attention to. Yeah, for sure. And I think that that's another, that's another cool aspect of it. So, so the whole memory thing, right? So there, there's another thing with, uh, so for me, I thought the profit was really cool. And the prophet is this old man. He kind of fortune tells. He kind of tells you the future. So it's kind of the opposite, right? You have one person in, in a time loop. You have another person who can erase memories and thoughts. And then you have another guy who is pretty much telling you the possible future. And so I, I found that like really interesting. And he, he's one of the main characters that survives from almost the beginning to almost the end. And mm -hmm. then at the end, you find out that like he, to me, like when I read it, I felt like he was reborn into that, into that other guy that was helping Ming Tzu at the end. Yeah. It's implied that it's like the same person, but different body. Yeah. And he had the same ability of foretelling like the future. Yeah. Yeah. And then he he's really cool because it's just the way he says things. Like uh, he calls Ming Tzu a man out of bounds. Was it out of yes. bounds? Yeah, man out of bound, bounds. Yeah. So basically, like everyone kind of has this end point of their life. And for some reason, Ming Tzu overpassed that end point. So he can't see Ming Tzu's, fu Ming Tzu's future, but he could see anyone else's. So I thought that was I thought that was really cool. And then, and then there's the Proteus guy. Proteus is, he was like some kind of, he wasn't a native. What was he? He's a, he's a Pacific Islander. That's right. He's a Pacific Islander. And what he can do is he can completely transform himself into, into the person he's mimicking. So that also shows another aspect of like identity in a sense, because he could steal people's identities but at the same time, I thought it was interesting because Ming Tzu doesn't really know his identity either. Because he's, he's an American, but he's Chinese, but he can't speak Chinese. You know, yeah. so I, I thought that was really interesting because there's a moment where him and the prophet, they go on one of their first quests and, and, they, and they end up at like, was it a gold? No, it was a, it was a railroad uh, construction area. Mm -hmm. oh this is when he was looking for the prophet 
and he ended oh, up the there. Beginning? Yeah. Yeah, the beginning. Yeah, and then everyone was speaking Chinese. There's a part where like the the magistrates of the railroad, they're trying to cheat the Chinese out of labor. And then all the Chinese people are kind of looking at him because he doesn't speak in, uh, Chinese or anything. So, yeah, I, I really thought that was really interesting. Okay, uh, back to you. What, what are some of the themes that, uh, what are the themes really stood out to you? Themes or things? No, themes. We'll just do themes. Um... I think I think memory was the main one. Um, also, so I was a little bit confused on the man out of bounds thing because the prophet said you are a man out of bounds because you did he take a life that wasn't meant to be yet or something? Like he he did something to cause him to have his fate um, out of sight of the prophet. Huh? Dude, like, do you I remember? Don't remember. I th- yeah. Well, basically, like me to like he 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 meddled he he set off a change of events where his fate is obscured right so the whole man out of bounds thing i thought i had assumed that that was basically meaning he was living on borrowed time mm. so like the prophet always says you know you're invincible until you die and he's like okay right. well when i die I die so i thought like he would die after he got like his um answer from his wife Mm-hmm. Once he got his revenge, but you, we see at the end he seems to be still alive, and you know shows his gun to the little kid or little something girl. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the kid. So I'm yeah. like, well, well, what does that even mean? Like, he just he's still alive, but the prophet couldn't see his fate, but it didn't really matter, you know. So I was yeah. kind of confused about that. I like, see it sounds you mean. cool, like man, man out of bounds. Like, it sounds cool, you know, but like yeah. what? It didn't really mean what I assumed it meant, so I was kind of confused on that. Yeah, I I could see what you mean, but I I kind of thought of it as just like the just like the prophet said, you know, I can't read you because you you've done something and you've been set away from the timeline. You know, there's a set timeline and you're not in it anymore because of something that you did. And for that, I can't I can't see your fate. Only you can move move through your own timeline yeah. so that's kind of how i saw it like in a way he's in he's in this universe but he's an attempt he's on a parallel line instead of along with everyone else yeah that's, why that's the- yeah yeah that that brings me to my second thread like the whole time loop thing yeah so here's my theory okay it said the the title is thousand the thousand crimes of ming Tzu, and then I remember a part where Ming Tzu, where um, I think Hazel asks Ming how many people he's killed, and he said hundreds. Yeah. So, like, is oh. he in a time loop? Is he in a time loop because he's happened? This has happened before, kind of like the Ringmaster. Because remember, he meets Hazel. He's like, "I know you from somewhere." Oh. And then, so like, also the Ringmaster, he's in his own time loop. So I'm right. assuming, so I have a question how that works. Like, does the time loop revolve around him? Like, does he meet the troop over and over again? Also mm. Ming over and over again, right? So that's why he's like, Ming Tzu is like, I know Hazel because I remember her. So if like, this is, this is like kind of why I'm, I didn't rate it this book higher because like, there's a lot of questions that I have, mm-hmm. which I think, there's a lot of threads created, but I don't think they really culminate clearly for me. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. So it's like, I know there's like these these hints, but like, I don't know if they're substantial enough to confirm my theory or not. And then, you know, sometimes an open ending is cool in a movie, which I think this this book is kind of aiming for, but in a book that's kind of, kind of yeah. unsatisfying you know Un- unless you know there's going to be others right like a series or something yeah i don't know i don't know if this there's going to be like a sequel to this book oh no no i'm not saying that i'm just saying like it would be unsatisfying unless they had that yeah but in in a sense like if you think about it it could be a book about reincarnation 
I mean, there's no yeah problem. because yeah because the prophet, right? Like the prophet, like not, who is he, right? Yeah, but not because, just a prophet because you you did mention the ringmaster, and he said that he's done this. You know, he's done this dance many times over a long period of it of. Year, thousands of years you know yeah so so my question is does he remember everything does he remember each try does he remember ming too is that why the ringmaster like latches onto him so strongly you know in oh. an age where nobody wants to have anything to do with the chinese right he like latches onto yeah. him kind of understands like hey we need your protection and then but then the other thing is like let's say hazel hunter nota proteus they don't seem to have any connection with anyone they don't seem to remember anyone so maybe it's just like the main character yeah but, i mean well I they they probably don't have that um memory intact and then that's another good point because the prophet his whole thing is he can't remember anything you know what i mean yeah he can't he, remember the past he can only see the future yeah, and then I don't remember why. He he has a specific reasoning for it, but do you remember what that was? Uh no. And then he's always singing that like he's always singing these songs and then he 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 states like it it sounds like a Confucian saying, you know, where he's kind of like songs don't matter, it's the words behind them or something like that. There's no yeah. there's no tone at the end of your story. It's just you know, words anyways. Yeah. So, yeah. I think, I, I think that has to do with memories ma making you who you are. Right. Right. So that's, that's where Nota is like erasing part of you kind of like with Hazel where he erased most, but not all of her memory of her past life. Right. So because like she kind of changed who she was, but not quite. Well, the main thing is, so she was married and then something happened to her husband, right? Yeah. I th He died or something. Yeah, he died. And then so pretty much she asked him to, she asked Noda to erase him. But, or no, no, she didn't ask. I thought it was the ringmaster. Didn't the ringmaster? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't, I forget that part, but we basically find out Hazel does remember bits and pieces of her of her past life right so memory is a big theme time is also a big theme a, a lot of both of those themes don't really get answered which is kind of one of your squabbles one of your qualms against the book sort of well yeah uh, i mean it's fun to think about like i have no yeah. problem with the questions being presented right but like when you introduce plot devices like that, like I kind of want to see them culminate right at the end, which it might have. Maybe I just need to read it again. But, you know, I didn't catch it on, on this read through. Okay. So like so that's so those unfinished threads as well as. So so let me go into my cons um, of the book. Sure. Go. for um, it. So in, I had a rough start with this book. Um, I think the first part where we're where we're um, getting introduced to the character of Ming and setting up his journey. And basically before meeting the circus troupe, mm -hmm. uh, the writing was for, to me was like kind of weird. It was like really flowery in like a weird way. Like really? it, it sounded, yeah, it sounded like it was trying to be really, um, I don't know. There was like a very unusual word selection. I thought it was very terse and to the point, like, he yeah, it, 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 it is. But like that's I think that is exactly what makes his unusual word choice stand out even more to me because there's not a lot of them. Oh, OK. So like, you know, when you write in a very brief and clipped way, you have to every word packs a bigger punch than if you like wrote paragraphs on paragraphs. So right. that's why it stood out to me. And it, that was kind of a con because it slowed me down. I had like reread it usually. So I've I've read books where there's unusual word choices, but it just uh -huh. instead of slowing me down, it like makes my mind think of things differently. Okay, and in a good way, like it's like oh, I didn't think of like describing a color or a thing like that. I see. I here, see. hero wasn't as intuitive for me. So, 
that was that was a con for me um and then and then at the end where he's by himself you know he's trying to get to california right yeah that's why that, when the cougar pops up i'm like I know the cougar symbolizes something, but this sounds, this seems like lazy writing to me just to make him not die and reach his goal. Right. Um, it's again, maybe, thing. maybe I've missed like a, a really hidden meaning in it, but yeah, I mean, I thought it was ahead. just a do six mocking a kind of thing. Like, yeah, exactly. Five. And then you got to kill this guy. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, okay, I think the rest of this book deserves better than, you know, just a uh, uh, ha- uh, uh, a hat trick like that, you know? Yeah, no, I see what um, you mean. Yeah, and at the end, you know, I find myself not really caring about the outcome of his quest for revenge. Because yeah, I, I, I cared more about the fate of, like, Hazel, Hunter, and the Ringmaster, you know? Yeah, I, I really wish, yeah... It, they ended it with Hazel and and Hunter. <laughs> yeah, um, because like the final shootout, it was it would have been like great cinema, right? Yeah, but I feel like it wouldn't really lack the emotional punch because like we've spent the whole movie just getting to know other characters other than Ada. Yeah, and no one really cares about Ada. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. at the end. Yeah, Especially like even. Even the twist where it was her who called like the the men to like basically attack him Save and her. separate yeah. them. Like I didn't really find myself caring that much. Yeah, like that should be like a punch to the gut. Like, like it should be like if you were Ming and you heard that, you should feel more of what he's feeling. But I didn't find myself feeling that way. Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. And then another thing. Oh wait, do you have more cons though? No. I think that was, that was it. That was all I had in my notes. Okay, okay. Um, a couple of things. I, I do agree with you, especially at the last, like, 10 chapters. I thought, it, it, I thought everything slowed down to, like, a very slow pace. And Ming, Ming does not talk a lot. You know, Ming does not have a lot of feelings. So he's kind of like a cipher. So when he when he's by himself, it doesn't have as much animation. You mm-hmm. know, it's not as animated without the supporting cast, which throughout the whole middle section is so well written. I, I feel like when he's with the circus yeah. people. That and was my that was my favorite part. It, exactly. Act, Especially act two. Yeah. What were you saying? Oh, I would say the act two is my favorite part of the book. Yeah, agreed. And any any part where the prophet is in it, I really enjoyed it too, because I thought there was such a substantial relationship that gets set up between them. And then I, I totally agree with you about Ada because at the end of the story, number one, you don't get to see a lot of the, a lot of the terror that she had, you know? So throughout the book, it's based on what Ming Tzu went through, right? Mm-hmm. But there's no real characterization of Ada where you would be like, oh, that's why she ran away. You know, you don't you don't really get to sympathize with her. So at the end, that gut punch of him killing her doesn't really matter. You know? Yeah, I was I was actually <laughs> at the end, I was I was like telling Ming, yeah, you need to kill this woman. She like pulled a fast one on you. You need to get rid of her. Yeah. And you just went through like months of your life trying to get her. You know what I mean? And yeah. It, and it turns out you kill like eight people for no reason. Because some girl just didn't want to be with you anymore because you killed hundreds of other men, you know? Like, yep. what was that relationship based on? Was it just like, oh, you're really pretty. Oh, you're Asian. I don't think so. Did they have yellow fever back then? <laughs> no, I think I think it was genuine um, in the beginning. Uh-huh. But like... I don't know. Like she, she's just not, there wasn't enough to like show her as a sympathetic character. It does show her finding the evidence Mm -hmm. and basically getting her heart broken over it. But you know, it's like, I don't know. It's kind of a leap to me to go from like finding that to like hiring hitmen to like, you know, stage, stage a kidnapping or whatever. Yeah. Agreed. So 
I have the qualms with you. I mean, I have the same qualms as you do. And then, so for me, uh, like like we mentioned, it, it's the second act that really makes the book stand out a little bit more. And then one of the one of my qualms was I'm like, oh man, it's a, it's a Chinese dude. Why why doesn't he know like kung fu? These these action scenes are just gun and. And oh, I thought I thought it was cool because he had the pick from when he when he worked on the railroad. Yeah, the spike. Yeah, the spike, and he uses it to like kill everyone, like yeah. as a finishing move. And you know what I thought was a cool scene, but it was just random. It, it's like a random scene is when everyone is laying around the fire, right? And then that snake pops up. You know what I'm? You know oh what yeah. I'm? Yeah, and for some reason that stands out because that feels like a true Western thing where, and it's cool because so basically they're lying around the fire, the fire is dying, and then it's like a a a, a snake slithers up, is about to you know fang him, you know bite him, but instead it turns around and it just races into the fire. <laughs> I think Ming says something to it. Yeah, he he's kind of like it's not my time yet. You know, yeah. or something like that. And the snake's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, sir," and you know, let me go kill myself in the fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I, I just remembered another little con that I had with the prophet was, you never feel like Ming is in any danger because of the prophet. Like the, he asked the prophet, "Like, what's going to happen today?" And he deduces, "Like, oh, he's safe today." So, you know, as a viewer, there's not really. Um, there's Suspense. not a lot of high stakes. Uh, like the stakes are not there, right? Right. And that's that's okay. just something that might detract from the tension or any tension that you might feel. But, you know, coming from the author's point of view, I don't think that's the intent, like to have you fear for Ming's life. It's for you to follow him along on this journey. So, yeah, you know, a little, little thing that I noticed that might bother some people, but, you know, it bothered me just a little bit. Because it took away, because when you have such good action scenes, like yeah. the shootouts are, they're pretty well detailed. So like, you can tell like this book and Tom was like, basically writing a movie, like it, it makes it into a perfect movie. Yeah. So like when you have a movie like this with guns and shootouts, like you need a little bit of tension there. Otherwise, it's not as exciting, right? Right, right. Yeah. So if they were to make a movie, I would say you got to strengthen the third act. And there's also like a freaking zombie dude, a zombie cowboy. You remember at the end? Oh, yeah. The uh, the outlaw. Shoots, you know, the outlaw was also kind of random. Like he just pops yeah. out like some final boss. Yeah. Yeah. So he just comes out of nowhere. And I don't know. He just. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, he so Ming shoots him in the head and he just survives it and he pops back up and chases him for a little while longer or actually no, no no he pops up he takes the prophet and they go and then ming is chasing him right yeah and then um and they have a fight wait when does the prophet die <laughs> uh i think at the end he gets shot in the leg right i think he bleeds out Wait no 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 no. Um, no. The the outlaw takes uh, the prophet and basically tries to get Ming to come out. Yeah. Otherwise, like he'll cut the prophet's throat, and I think he that's that's what happens. Like he cuts the throat, but Ming just doesn't come out. Oh, and then later on, Ming attacks him later. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. And the prophet for, foretold this. He's like, you'll know. Like when my death comes, you have to like run or something. Like, right. don't come to me. I mean, I j I just I just thought the prophet was cool. But okay, so we said the second act is our favorite. Why don't you get into a little bit? Really quick though, I would like to say there are some sex scenes in it that I was like, mm-hmm. Me too. Get get your game on, bro. You know he he does get intimate with Hazel. And uh, yeah, okay, so let's talk about the second act since it's both of our favorite acts. So what yeah. what stood out to you in regards to this? Um, you, you did mention Nota a little bit, but yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think a, a couple things, um, a couple of things contributed and came together nicely. So I think the writing really improved in the second acts, especially describing the landscape, um, you know, the, uh, the harshness of, of the wild and basically their journey. Right. Um, and that's, and then you're coupled with a lot of pretty good character development too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a lot of interesting concepts are introduced. So like, this is where a lot, like it really picked up for me. Um, like there's a lot of cool shots that I envisioned in my head if there was, were a movie, right? Right. Like you see like mountain ranges with like a sudden thunderstorm. And you, I mentioned before that like fish or whale skeleton that they just come across in the desert. Yeah. Um, yeah. They see a lot of cool things like verging on the surreal. Right. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, it just, it just, it, I just like stuff like that, you know, it's kind of like, and coupled with like that magical, um, nature really of like cool. the circus troupe. And you're like, you know, like what's next? Like, I kind of want to see what, what these people are up to next. Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, this is kind of where Ming actually becomes a little more sympathetic because, you know, he still has emotion he learns to kind of fall in love with Hazel. And at first, at first when he meets Hunter, so Hunter's like this little kid in the troop and his ability is kind of like, he he's a ventriloquist, but he's actually talking in your mind. So it's kind of like a telepathic thing, right? Yeah. And then so, so what's really cool is, you know, even that kid gets a little time to develop where he actually kills someone at one point. Hunter Hunter kills someone to help save, you know, their group. And then Ming Tu has to calm him down. And throughout the book, like throughout the middle act, like Hunter, you find out that he was orphaned pretty much. And but he still thinks about his quote unquote mother. And, you know, Hazel's kind of his surrogate mother. But they create a small little family unit, Hazel, Hunter, and Ming too. So what I would have wanted to see is like at the end of the movie, he should have went back to them. And I think it's implied that he is going on the train to go meet them. Yeah. But I think it could have ended two ways. If it, if, if it were a film, number one, I think he should have killed everyone, but he should have been wounded and possibly died. Or number two, and the, so if he's wounded and possibly dies, they end with a shot of Hunter and Hazel, and they're somewhere else, right? Or number two, you have them actually join together again, like at the very end. I wouldn't even have the scene of him at the railroad, just like someone knocks at the door, and boom, he's there. It is simply a Hollywood ending, but I don't know. I think that would bring the audience into, you know, full circle in a sense in terms of their relationship. And I thought like Proteus was pretty cool too. He's a dick, but yeah. Do you remember exactly what happened? Cause I remember when Proteus first meets Ming, they're pretty cordial, right. but then like, as they continue their journey, he just hates Ming because Proteus is really close to the ringmaster. Right. And Proteus ends up thinking Ming is causing the ringmaster's sickness. So the, the ringmaster has tuberculosis. Right. And we only find out like towards towards the middle end area. Um, and Proteus thinks Ming's poisoning him or like making him sick, basically. Right. So I think it could be one of two things, right? Okay, number one, Proteus is able to physically manifest, but at the same time, he doesn't talk normally unless he can steal your voice right basically take over your voice and and mimic that completely so what i think is number one he's actually taking on the life of the ringmaster but not so you know how the ringmaster is reborn over and over and over again yeah and i think throughout all those times he he retains certain versions of himself certain memories this is my theory. Mm -hmm. But what I think is Proteus is taking 
just the ringmaster at face value without all the experience and without all the other lives that he's lived. So basically, he is who the ringmaster would be if the ringmaster didn't have all those other experiences, which possibly goes back to leading to your point that maybe the ringmaster and Ming Tzu have done this over and over and over again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I remember Proteus also wanted Ming to like not travel with them. Yeah. I wonder I wonder if Proteus's abilities lets him have some idea of like what the outcome always is because he can shape shift and retain well, I guess he doesn't get their memories, but I don't know. Maybe it helps him retain his memory if there well, is no. indeed a big time loop. Well, the, the thing with my theory is he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't assume all memories. He just assumes the identity of that particular person at that single point in time. But not the memories, just their Yeah, just their current thoughts or something. Exactly. So in my head, what he is is he's the ringmaster. He's actually the ringmaster with all of his thoughts. But this is the ringmaster without all the all the Memories. other experiences. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That that's that's cool. Yeah. So in actuality, the ringmaster is is a racist dude. Like he would rather not be with the Asian dude. But because he yeah, has all we, these we other do lives, see that we do see that towards the beginning. Right. So that that's kind of my thought behind it. Overall, I understand your qualms in. You know, like now that we talk and we're talking about it more, I am kind of shifting to a three and a half because I do feel like the ending is unsatisfactory, kind of what we talked about. But my main, I I don't really have as many qualms about some of the themes because I I guess I don't think too much about them. <laughs> well, I mean, the the things that I had a problem with are like the plot, like plot points. Right, Basically, right, right. like when you introduce a plot point, yeah. like I expect to see it used later on and contribute right. towards the ending, right? Which maybe it did. Maybe I'm just not smart enough to grasp it, but it didn't really come together for me like that. I gotcha. Yeah. Well, other than that, I mean, overall, three and a half is not bad out of five, right? Yeah. I mean, I enjoyed it. It's, I would say the strength of this book is it's, most likely you've never read anything like it before. Right. Um, and just, uh, you know, the char- some of the characters are really cool. And um, yeah, this will most likely be turned into a movie. <laughs> yeah. You know, 100%. so yeah. Um, speaking of movies, if you were to cast this, um, what, what, would you, what would you cast the characters as? All right, man. This is, this is pretty hard. Like I, I actually listed out a bunch of people. But wait, before we get there, uh, is there anything else you want to say, themes or anything like that before we get there? Uh, no, I think we've covered a whole bunch and more. Okay. Okay, perfect. Okay, I'll start with Ming Tzu. I think Ming Tzu, uh, it kind of mentioned that he was a younger dude. So I don't know why, but I have this thing for Louis Tan. <laughs> I think he's really cool, and I think he could... You know, he kind of can pull off some grit and he's a really good fighter, although the action in this is more of a gun fighting. Yeah, but he is pretty charismatic in certain roles. And I don't know. I think he could pull it off. But then I also saw Into the Badlands, which I talked to you about. Yeah. And, And although Daniel Wu is kind of old. Right when I saw like the opening scenes of him, I was like, oh, dude, this guy can kick major ass he looks he looks younger than he is yeah exactly dude he's almost 48 or something he's like yeah older but he could probably pass in his mid-30s or something yeah and he can move like he's really good Mm -hmm. and then i also thought of joe taslam but my main concern with joe taslam is his english yeah um he's not as fluent but he can learn it yeah. Like he he just needs to work at it. But yeah, what about you, Ming Tzu? 
Uh, I I just had Andrew Koji. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, he why? Just, he just seems the he plays stoic pretty well, and Ming Su is very stoic. Yeah, that's um, true. I think I think uh, they the book said Ming Su was five eleven or so five ten. Oh, so shoot. I think I think Andrew is about that height, maybe maybe a little bit taller. Yeah, and you know he's he's proven proven himself in action. So yeah, the shooting scenes and whatever should be no problem. I also put like Keanu Reeves as a runner up. <laughs> <laughs> But I definitely yeah. think he's a little too old for that. He looks yeah. great, though. Yeah, definitely. Who'd you have for um, the prophet? Ada, Ada and the ringmaster. Oh, I, I did not cast the prophet. You did not cast the prophet? Okay, okay. I'm going to do Ada first. Now, Ada, I was just thinking of who do I want to see as an actress die, like on screen? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, because some of the people that I chose. They normally don't die in movies. So here we go. I've got like five girls. <laughs> okay. Okay. Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then I put Kristen Stewart as well because I'm just like, oh. But I haven't seen her new movie. She's, so. she's actually pretty good. She was in that movie uh, Underwater. Oh, she movie. was good in that. I will yeah. agree. Um, I also have Dakota Johnson from... <laughs> 50 shades of gray because i hated that movie oh. <laughs> so yeah she could take one for the team and then uh last one was probably cara delavine oh yeah yeah <laughs> what about you who'd you have i just put naomi watts <laughs> why i don't know she just came to mind dude she's a little older but okay oh was she's Ada supposed young. to be younger I don't know. I don't remember. Like, he doesn't put a lot of age descriptions. Yeah, all, all that you know about Ada is, like, her hair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I did I did choose uh, some people for The Prophet. Do you remember James Hong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got yeah, his I, Hollywood star, right? Dude, I think he's still alive. Okay. And I think he would be great, dude. Because... He's, number one, he's a great thespian. He's been in so many good movies. And he's more of the frailer looking Asian dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then and then I also I also looked up some of the casting in in um what's it what what's that Bruce Lee show called? Warrior? Yeah. So I found I found a few people because there's there's an Asian American actor named Hoon Lee. Oh he's yeah, kinda, yeah. He's kind of older though. I mean, he's younger actually. But there's another one, Yuan Hua. So he was in, he was in Shang Chi, and he was the old, he was the old master. Like oh, at the, at end. the end, yeah, yeah, yeah. with the, with the archery. So I thought he'd be good too. So yeah, that's who I have for that. Okay, let's go to Ringmaster. Who'd you have? I had Liam Neeson or Ben Cranston. Who's Ben Cranston? Breaking Bad. Brian. Brian Cranston. Oh yeah, Brian Cranston. Sorry. <laughs> I uh, I actually had Liam Neeson for a time, and then I took him off. Why? I th I thought it was it might be too small for him, but then I, but the reason no. why I did think about him was because he was in a Coen Brothers movie, that was a western, and he was really yeah. good in it. I mean, the ringmaster has a pretty significant part. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't call it a small role. I I I thought of a Willem Dafoe. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that could work. And then and then I had a thought for Peter Dinklage just to like th throw people <laughs> off their game. Yeah. And then uh, that could work too. And then you know how you had uh, Brian Cranston? I had Bob Odenkirk. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I thought I thought that would be a good, um, yeah. Okay, Hazel. Uh, I had Rooney Mara. Oh wow, you you went you went with like single single folks. Uh, I I I have like five girls, but I think I would end with Haley Bennett. Do you know Haley Bennett? She uh, was is she in Agents of Shield. 
No, no, you're thinking. Well, Chloe that's, that's Bennett. Chloe Bennett. Yeah. Um, yeah. Haley, oh, Haley oh, Bennett in? was in um, uh, Antoine Fuqua movie. She's a she's a she kind of looks like Jennifer Lawrence, but she's up and coming. She's been in a lot of like Equalizer. She was in Equalizer, but she was like the Russian prostitute. But yeah, look look her up. She's uh she's pretty good. Okay, I thought this one was hard. Who'd you go for for Hunter? Uh, I did not cast him. I mean, he's just a little kid, you know. Yeah. Okay, we'll skip him. Okay, next up, Nota. So Nota is the Native American character. Yeah, I had um, the most famous Native American <laughs> actor, uh, Wes Studi. Oh my god, dude, he's too old, man. No. No, he's not. Okay, okay, I... I looked one up. Yeah, this guy, Zan McLaren. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you his name in the chat. But this guy, he he's really cool. He's been in he's been in a lot of uh, newer. I think it was TV shows actually. But I really enjoy one of his performances. He was in Bone Tom Tomahawk. Oh, have you seen that? No, yeah, I did, I did, but it's been a while. Did you he like was it? Also in Doctor S- Doctor Sleep. He was Crow Daddy. Uh, I'll have to see him. But yeah, I I, 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 I I saw that movie as well. Okay, look look him up on IMDb. Okay, but he he's he's really good. He he has like this really imposing character. He was in Longmire. I think that's where I remember him from. Oh, okay. Okay, so you have West Studi. Okay, Proteus. So you said he's Pacific Islander. Who did you go yeah. with? So I was like, you know, Jason Momoa, but probably not. I'd probably go with Cliff Curtis because he's a oh. Ma- Maori. Dude, that's a great choice. I I have a bunch of people, but I think I would go with Manu Bennett. Is he Islander? Yeah, he is. Um, well... Hold on. I think, um, well, I looked up Pacific Islander and he showed up. So I'm not yeah, sure. he's from New Zealand. Oh, okay. So if you know him, he was in he was in Arrow and he was Deathstroke. But yeah, he yeah, really- I, I know. He was in okay. uh, Spartacus as well. Oh, was he good in that? Mm, yeah, I mean, you just, yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know, just fighting and cursing and whatever. I gotcha. And then I don't know if you want to do Gomez. Gomez, I had Danny Trejo. <laughs> Dude, screw everything. I'm gonna put Danny Trejo too. Yeah. I I did have a uh, Michael Pena, but. <laughs> uh. But Danny Trejo. Yeah, seeing seeing um Michael Pena in a western. I don't know. I haven't seen him in anything other than like a modern day piece. Yeah, that's true. So. Like I normally do, I kind of did a director's list too. Now, number one, I put John Woo. But the main reason I did that is because he was always slated to do an Asian American movie about the railroads. So, oh. and then the action scenes in this, I think he, he could really put a zinger on that. And on yeah, top of yeah. that, it kind of has like all this male relationships at the same wait, time. Wait, what? You know, you know how like John Woo, he kind of has, it's a lot of male relationships. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, are there a lot of male relationships here? Yeah. Like, I mean, there's friends with me too, but not, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't, they're kind of like brothers in a sense or father, son, you know? Uh, I don't know. I didn't really get that sense. Okay. Well, anyways. And then I also thought like Destin, Daniel Cretton. Because he recently did Shang Shang Chi, yeah. So I think he could pull it off. Oh, and if you haven't seen freaking the harder they fall, I think James oh, Samuel. It. Yeah. Oh, you saw it? Yeah. It's it's really it's good, but it was like a little bit too stylized for this. Right. For this right here. I don't know, yeah, man. Well, what? Yeah. John Woo might also a little be too stylized because I think you really need. Um, someone with an eye for awesome visuals because the second part you know has a lot of great visuals 
And that brings up my third choice, Chloe Zhao. <laughs> okay, I haven't seen any of her movies yet. I've only seen Inter- Eternals. It's a terrible Marvel movie, but the visuals are really great. <laughs> okay. Is it that bad? I, 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 I read mixed reviews. I, I didn't really like it that much. Okay. There's a lot of characters. There's too many characters for one movie. It was kind of like Justice League, but the two-hour cut with Joss Whedon. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it wasn't that great. There are a lot of overpowered characters and underpowered characters. So anyways, guys, we want to thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Yellow Pages, the book cast. And I don't know. Do we want to say what we're reading right now? Um, We can give a little hint. We are going to continue with uh, one of our previous reviews. The we are going with the sequel to Jade City. So if you want to go ahead and start reading that sequel, jump on it. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.